session of Daniel chapter 8. The feed got cut off. Sometimes that happens. I don't know. I can't control it. Seems like, you know, they've been messing... Somebody's messing with my gadgets, but... At the same time, also trying to mess with me. But God is able, though. So let's go back into the scriptures here. We left off when we got cut off here at 19, I think. Or 18. 18, yeah. No, well, let's start from 17. As, as he came near the place where I was standing, I was terrified and fell prostrate. Son of man, he said to me, understand the vision concerns the time of the end. Son of man, and what is, who is the son of man? Who, that's another AKA for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has a lot of AKAs. You also have the line of Judah, another AKA, Yeshua, Yeshua is Joshua in uh, Hebrew, okay, Yeshua, so Joshua, that's where it derives from, the Hebrew word, you're actually saying Son of Man, Jesus Christ, so we pray, we say, sometimes we say Yeshua, or we say Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Some of us have more, um, more, one, more than one name. I know I do, but uh, you know, um, I just prefer, I just prefer, uh, you know, uh, Christian, Christian, uh, Christian teacher, <laughs> or Christian Bible reader. Uh, uh, yeah, call me Christian Bible reader. All right. All right. Here we go. He said to me, "Understand the vision concerns the time of the end." While he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep, with my face to the ground. Then he touched me and raised me to my feet. He said, I'm going to tell you what will happen later in the time of wrath, because the vision concerns the appointed time of the end. The two-horned ram that you saw represents the kings of Media, Media and Persia. The shaggy goat is the ram that you saw represents the kings of... Actually, no. The shaggy goat is the king of Greece. And the large horn between his eyes is the first king. The four horns that replace the one that was broken off represent, represent four kingdoms that will emerge from his nation that will not have the, the same power. And the latter part of their reign, what, when rebels have to become completely wicked, a stern-faced king, a master of intrigue, will arise. He will become very strong, but not by his own power. He will cause astounding devastation and will succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy the mighty men and the holy people. He will cause deceit to prosper, and he will consider himself superior when they feel will cause will deceit to prosper. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and take his stand against the prince of princesses. Yet he will be destroyed, not by human power, however, by not by human power. So is this vision concerning the Antichrist? It could be. It could be. It could just be. We read, okay, so verse verse 17 or verse 15, um, Gabriel, you know who Gabriel is? Gabriel, besides Michael, is an angel. Gabriel the angel. Okay, there's two angels. You have Michael, the archangel, and you have Gabriel. And why does Gabriel pop up in Daniel's vision here? Good question. Uh, God used to explain Daniel's visions, okay? Because uh, he also announced the birth of John the Baptist. We, we can remember that in Luke chapter 1-1. 
Okay, I don't remember all the verses. I tried to where they're at, but I actually I remember the verses, but I don't remember where they're at. Sometimes I know like you know the numbers where they're at, but you know I try to process the whole Bible if I can in, in my hard drive. <laughs> In, in 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 the back of my mind, I try to you know. There's so much stuff in the Bible, 66 books, 40 authors. It's pretty complex here, you know. So we we sit here try try to dissect the uh, the information, the scriptures, and also store the the uh, importance of the scriptures so we can refer back to them later. And as a human. You know, with all the information that we're bombarded with on a daily basis, you know, we get a lot of clutter. So we try to limit the clutter as possible when we're dealing with the scriptures here. We try to, you know, um, I don't know if you ever worked in an office. I have, I have many offices and cubicles. And, uh, you know, um, if I don't clear my desk, there's a lot of clutter, a lot of stuff, and I'm like, Where's this at? Where's that at? So it's better to be organized and, you know, uh, and we can try to remember where everything's at when we can refer, refer to it. So, you know, John the Baptist was in Luke chapter 1, 1, 1, 11. And um, that was Gabriel. Gabriel announced the, um, the birth of John the Baptist. You know what happened to John the Baptist later on, right? Long story short, another king decided to chop his head off. I think it was King Herod, an evil king. The same king that was trying to kill baby Jesus. Killed uh, John the Baptist. Again, I originally came from a Baptist church, by the way. That's where I got baptized in a Baptist church. Now I'm at Calvary Chapel. Because my church split over some... Long story short, they split over something small. See, the thing is, I, I didn't want to be part of this split here, so I left and went to another church. So I've been a part of Calvary Chapel since 2000 and... 2000. That's how long I've been part of Calvary Chapel. That's 19 years I've been a member of Calvary. And, um, and when I was at Calvary, Calvary chapels nationwide, by the way. It's not just, you know, I came from a little Baptist church, but Chuck Smith is the one that founded Calvary Chapel. We're nationwide. We're in every every state. Not just in the nation, in every state. We're also uh, worldwide. We're in Africa. We're we're in uh, Asia. We're in, uh, you know, Mexico. We're, in, we're everywhere. We're, we're humongous as a church. We're, we're deep, okay? So, that's good. Also, it could be bad. Because you know what happens? When we're this big, we have a lot of bickering one another. That's how we get so big, like, we start arguing one another over little things, man. Well, that's the devil. Trying to, you know, divide everybody. But at the same token, um, we're, God's going to use this. Us Calvary Chapel members here to do a good work. Um... I, in my, in my past, have argued with other Calvary Chapel mem members over, over scriptures. But we, we, uh, at the end of the day, we hugged and, and, you know, made up. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily kissed to make up. <laughs> hugged and make up is better. You know, um, anyhow, uh, verse, enough about me, where Calvary Chapel. Doesn't matter what church you're part of. If you are a, if you you're part of the universal church of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, um, you know uh, it's 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 a given. But Chuck Smith is the one that found the Calvary Chapel, so and he passed and not not too recently. But God God rest his soul, he did some good there. Anyhow, um, verse twenty three, and the latter. Part of the rain. Actually, no. Did we finish the scriptures? I don't think we did. Let's stay off the rabbit's trail, man. Let's finish these scriptures. Then we get back on the rabbit's trail. Um, so I stay on the rabbit's trail too long. I forget where I'm at, man. <laughs> uh, we're at 24, right? 
Yeah, 24. He will become, no, no, not 24, 26. The visions of the evenings and mornings that have been given to you is true. But the seal of the vision for it concerns the distant future. I, Daniel, was exhausted and lay ill for several days. Then I got up and went about the king's business. I was appalled by the vision. It was beyond understanding. And so, you know, um, at, at the touch of my, you know, you know what power is, right? Power is when you look at your phone, you can call, you can call one person, you get the cavalry over here. That's power. You know, I can look at my phone, I can call, if I call one cavalry member, they call their cavalry members, we're going to be, there's going to be a lot of heads there. Okay, that's power. You look at your phone and be like, you know, I call this number, these guys will show up. These guys will show up on my behalf. That's called power. Okay? And in, in the Bible, however, um, the, uh, the thing is, we, uh, what's going to call it? Um, there's this guy that God is saying, uh, he is, he is, he is not, he is destroy, he will destroy mighty men and holy people. Who is that guy? Is that the Antichrist? Verse, we're from verse 23. Who, who has the power to de destroy the mighty men of God? You know, it says here that mighty men, mighty men, okay, so mighty men in, in King David's days, okay, there were mighty men there. You know what a mighty men is? A mighty men is like, kind of like a, a, a uh, you know, like the president has secret service agents around him. That those are his mighty men. Those are his those are his own personal bodyguards. They're, David had those type of people. King David did of Israel. Okay, mighty men, mighty men of God. Who has the power to kill mighty men of God? That's a good question. Somebody does, obviously. <laughs> and um, we don't know. Still a question mark. doesn't say in the scriptures. Sometimes the scriptures doesn't tell you everything. You know, you got to seek God in prayer to, in addition to, to ask God to show you. If you seek Him deeply in the spiritual realms, I think He will show you who it is. Uh, another thing, uh, mysteriously, uh, there were there were transfers of power Okay, from one king to another, one kingdom. Um, where the question is, does this take place in Babylon, or does it take place in in a, in a different uh, nation? Does it take place in Persia? Does it take place in Medes? Does it take place in Antioch or Ephesus? Who knows, man? There's so many different nations uh, in those in the Bible days. It doesn't really say. All we know is there's a bunch of kings and rulers, and uh, you know, you gotta you gotta know that Daniel's not really talking about these kings when he's having these visions. Daniel's kind of sense a a uh, what you call it a, a fortune teller in a good way though. You know, if you have these days you have fortune tellers, you pay them a certain amount of money, and they can tell you your future. But uh, you know, on on the they're actually using demon power to do that, and they're and they might tell you the future and but right beyond dot, but they're actually using either witchcraft or black magic, or warlockism, or, or or mysticism or something like that of that sort in the spiritual world as well. So you think about Satan and his demons. If you ask him, he will he will give you power, but he just asks you one thing that uh, you don't mention Jesus Christ, you don't mention the church, and then you give your soul to him. Then he'll give you everything in this world. All, 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 all he wants is your soul. That's you, you know the you know what really really is going on. There's a tug of war going for our souls, man. There's like a chess game between God and Satan. That's what's really happening behind closed doors. The question is, what side are you going to be on? That's the question. For me, you're you I know who I chose. Um. Let me know the devils and the details of these things that are wicked and his minions. And we uh, here on this side of things, 
uh, operate in the spiritual realms as, as well. The spiritual realms is, you know, the scriptures, uh, Yeshua, angels, angels of God, and there's a spiritual warfare going on. You can't see behind closed doors. Okay. Excuse me, I need to take a sip of this water here. Um, but, uh, we know if you seek God in a spiritual... I've been a Christian since 1996, you know. And, um, I, I first came across the Bible in 1999, but I didn't become a Christian until like three years later. So it took me a while because, you know... At, at at those times, I was, you know, I was, I was really into my sinful way of life. I didn't really want to give up my sinful life, you know. I don't want to give up the uh, the partying, the uh, the immorality, you know. I don't want to give that up, you know. And then God was knocking on my heart, though. People were praying for me, man. I don't know. Thank God, who was praying for me. But I finally came to the conclusion that I need to give up this this immorality, this sinful life. And go to Christ, man. I just give this all up, man. And that's what I did, you know. In 1999, uh, um, so actually no, did I say 96? 96 is where I was first exposed to the Bible and the Scriptures and church. And then 99 is when I got saved, okay, in the Baptist church. Uh, I started going to that Baptist church for many years. I was part of the Baptist church. I gave sermons at that Baptist church. My, the pastor that baptized me, I still got a picture of it. Um, and now, years later, I'm at Calvary Chapel. So, that's why I dedicate this channel to the Calvary Chapel, Calvary Chapel folks. So, um, no matter what, like no matter what church, I've been a part of many churches, by the way, um, not those those two churches, but you know, there are a lot of other churches that. Okay, let's talk about churches. Since one of the subject of churches here, uh, there there are there are a lot of churches out there. You gotta watch out. They're not teaching the Bible. They're teaching something else. They're teaching New Age. They're teaching. Uh, let let me tell you, if you go if you go to a church and there there are also charismatic churches. Charismatic churches they uh they do some weird things, man. They're doing like, you know, like you know, I don't know if you heard a guy named Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is charismatic, okay? He's he's claiming that he's an apostle, that he can heal people by touching people and praying over them. That that is apostate. Apostate. That's false. Okay? The way you heal somebody is you pray to God. You, you, you're not an apostle. There is no more apostles. There is only 12 or 13 original apostles. We're disciples. If someone tells you they're an apostle, they're lying to you. And the real ones are going to expose the fake ones. We're the real ones exposing the fake ones. The phonies. The wannabes. There's a lot of wannabes out there, man. You better watch out. They ain't real. They're wannabes. Bunch of wannabes, man. We call where I come from. We call them wannabes. They're they're posers. They they dress a certain way. They look a certain way. They carry themselves a certain way. But the, in actuality, they're fake. They're phony. Fraud. Watch out. They're out. The, what did the Lord say? The Lord said. Uh, there in your church is going to be wolves among the sheep. You got to learn how to spot these wolves, man. Okay, not necessarily a a physical wolf. Satan comes in as a master of disguise. He's an angel of light. He can transform into anything, and including his demons. Okay, you don't know it's deception. It's all around us. Deception. The only way that you can uh, beat deception is to be in the spiritual realms of who God really is. Because God cannot lie to you. God cannot. If the real God in heaven...
cannot lie to you. You know who's a liar? You know who the liar is. It's D E V I L. What does that spell? Devil. He's a liar. The author of confusion likes to confuse people. And another thing besides the churches, okay, there are Bibles that are mistranslated. There are Bibles, and this day, if you if you buy the new Bibles, the new translated ones, there are a lot of things like not. If you read the King James, it's the, it's the most purified English translation. But you read the other translations, they're not they're not on dot. They're like there's a lot of Bibles out there that that are not. Uh, they're there. That's Satan right there, changing God's word around. Somebody's changing God's word around, man. And we're not getting the real deep meaning of who God is. So you know, stick to the 1983 NIV and the King James, and you'll be fine. That's what I, because those two translations are are like the most, you know, besides the other, uh, the Amplified Bible, um, and the Message and the uh, NLT. Those are pretty much what I use. I don't use anything else.